absolutely. Tell us all about the award, Chris. Um, well, every year the National Communication Association, which is in art in the Com Studies discipline, is the uh, national professional organization. Uh, gives out an award for small uh, liberal arts college programs that is a program of excellence. And uh, basically, they try to highlight uh, the best or like a, a great program in the United States. And this year, uh, we got selected. Mm -hmm. How did you think they found out about us? Well, we they have an application, so oh, we, we chose to we uh, chose to apply, um, uh, and uh, they have different questions they ask, and we uh, turn in a bunch of different uh, material about the program, and they have a selection committee of uh, peers. And uh, and then they yeah they uh, looked at that and chose us mm -hmm. the Rex Mix Program of Excellence Award that's yeah. fantastic congratulations Lori thank you so much how long have you been uh, teaching communication studies I've been at Monmouth College since 2013 but I've been teaching communication studies uh, well my goodness since um, 1997 <laughs> was my first. Uh, position after graduate school. So uh, that was at an institution in New York State. Yes. Well, good for you. Glad that you're here in Monmouth. Chris, how about you? What's your background? Um, I uh, started out in media. I started out in high school doing exactly what you're doing um, in front in, uh, you know, behind a microphone doing uh, radio. And then I always thought that was my path. Uh, through college uh, and continued to do it after college, but sort of side slid into doing some television in college and uh, started teaching and stayed and got uh, my graduate degree. And then I've sort of bounced back and forth uh, between uh, television, radio, and uh, uh, teaching. And this is my 20th year at Monmouth. And then I was a couple places before that at community college in Iowa. And I've been teaching, well, really full time since 90. Well, 95 when I was in grad school and then a uh, regular job, 96 and uh, off and on since then. And then, yeah, been, been here for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. Glad to have you both. Tell us about the department, Lori. Well, we refer to ourselves as commutopia. <laughs> 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 um, and the reason we, we have that uh, label and identity is because for a long time, I, th I would say even before I got here, it's been a very collegiate atmosphere, and we collaborate wonderfully, and the students sense that, uh, and we are very student-centered. And I think that is one of the things that made us appealing to the people who were looking at our materials when determining who would be awarded this recognition, uh, because we're always thinking about um, what will benefit students in their professional lives and in their personal lives and in their civic lives. So, for example, uh, I coordinate our basic communication course, Fundamentals of Communication Studies, and a few years ago, we opted to drop one of our required speeches and replace it with a deliberation. Mm -hmm. And students sit in a circle after reading materials about a significant issue and engage in a deliberation. They talk about the pros and cons um, to each solution to a problem and they spend about 90 minutes using their materials, sharing their own experiences and hearing other people's voices and along the way I think building empathy for other people's positions and so many of those students walk away thinking I want to do that again I want to deliberate again I've never had that experience because they oftentimes associate talking about controversial significant cultural p political social issues with anger and conflict uh, and feelings of discomfort. And they walk away from the deliberation in, in uh, the class knowing it can be something very different than that. Very different. Mm -hmm. And then that's what we have to hopefully get back to in teaching our, our young people is it's okay to have opinions and it's okay for somebody else to have another opinion. And uh, just calm discussion. Those were the days, right? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and I just missed you guys because I graduated in 96 with a calm degree. So mm -hmm. I just missed both of you so mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. but enjoyed it. You know, back then our fundamentals of comm were you took things like organizational communication, persuasion, uh, you know, uh, interpersonal communication, all kinds of different right. types of, of communication. But ultimately it comes down to uh, the fundamentals mm-hmm. of being able to, to communicate with others. So glad that you guys got a big award. Who's on your staff? <laughs> Um, besides the two of us, uh, we uh, Trudy Peterson, uh, who's the department chair, uh, she's been there, is this 25? Yes. I think this is her 25th year um, at Monmouth, um, and she teaches interpersonal is like one of her big areas, and she also coordinates women's studies, um, which is, uh, I think, another reason why our department is appealing to lots of students from everywhere, because we are sort of a safe space where people can come and talk about um, and feel like there, it's, it's okay to talk about all these other uh, issues. And then uh, Shweta Srivastava um, has this third, fourth year she's been with us, or longer fifth. than that, fifth. I can't, I'm terrible with numbers, which is why I became a comm <laughs> <Right>? student. Uh, <laughs> but uh, um, at, Shweta teaches um, uh, or persuasion and um, organizational, and she has an interest in media as well. And then our newest hire, uh, Reginald Bell, comes to us uh, this year and teaching uh, mainly in our strategic communication, public relations area as well. And then one of our recent grads is adjuncting for us, Ethan Hager, um, who's right from right here in Monmouth. And uh, he Ethan just, was here, yeah. Yeah, and I think he, I was about ready to say, I think he uh, <laughs> interned right here with you guys um, or worked for you. Uh, yeah, he finished up uh, his uh, master's degree at Western and has been teaching the uh, fundamentals of communication class for us as well. Good for Ethan. Good for him. Yeah, you know what's interesting about communications and real world application now is the technology advancements. We actually have too much communication to keep track of. It sort of feels like you never get that list checked off because, you know, the email you sent with the answer to the question ends up on a chain of emails with more questions (laughs) at six o'clock at night and you feel like you have to complete it Mm -hmm. and get that communication back or it's just going to be there waiting for you in the morning. So it is so interesting how to balance all the communication because of the phone. Or I should say the computer, the phone, the appliance now uh, is yeah. in your hand. There's there's so much more communication. We well, yeah, had one of the, you know, and one of the things that we talk about all the students in our major and a number from others place take uh, a media and society class and one of the big things we talk about in that is, you know, this uh, information glut information overload and how that can have uh, this effect on people where they pull back. You know, there's just too much and then all of a sudden they stop paying attention to anything. So, you know, when they when people talking about fake news, they can't trust this, they can't trust that. There's large amounts of people who just all of a sudden say, I'm just not going to listen to any of it. And that's like the worst response you can have. And then there's this thing where you're afraid you're going to miss something and they call it FOMO, fear of sure. missing out, you know, and then it's just so much and it can consume consume you and we talk about how you know there's this balance and this need for us all to be very more information literate beyond just the media it's one of the focuses we talk about in the fundamentals class but then we talk about it all along that you need to understand what you're being exposed to and to see what the behind of that is what the meaning of that is what's this person trying to do and most of the time there's nothing wrong with what they're trying to do it's more about you understanding that they're trying to do this and you, uh, you know, getting the right message out of it and understanding um, and not being tricked or led sure. the wrong way. Clickbait. Yeah. And yes, this morning Consumer Affairs just sent us a, an alert that there is a lot of deep fake scams mm-hmm. um, and, and deep fake mean, meaning untrue yeah. articles out there. And you have to always be very, very careful. Mm-hmm. What's nice about having a local communications um, studies course right here, or major, I should say, um, we're, we're very lucky because we like to partner with you guys mm-hmm. and do internships because at the local level, I don't have to worry about a big boss in Chicago or L.A. or New York being part owner. It's just we're just going to give you the news. Mm-hmm. What's going on in, in the community and with the kids in sports and, and theater and all the different you know extracurriculars. So we get very lucky that we get to do that and stay out of all the politics, right? Yeah. Well, I think that's the wonderful thing about you guys being here because – it's, it's a model that I talk about, uh, both with telling students what's important about the college radio we do, but what's important in radio and how that's very rare, you know, and in, in the area to have still have an example of, you know, a station that's doing what I personally think all stations should do and is the generalized problem across 
you know, commercial radio um, is this not being focused local and being focused on a commodity that's not uh, that big of a sell, which is music that people can get anywhere. So when you're banking on music, you're banking on something that is not as big a commodity as it was 20 or 30 years ago when people were coming to the radio to listen to music. Before it's, the internet. Yes, before the internet, before you had Spotify, before you had everything on your phone uh, that you could do. It just doesn't make sense to continue to focus that way. But the local, which is where I started on a very, very local small AM station that did every sporting event, uh, had you know, people from different towns calling in, telling you the news from the town, uh, was it's that's what it should be, and that's what uh, is nice about this partnership that we have, like a really good model here, of you know uh, where they can come and work and see what radio really should be. Mm-hmm. Um, well, right. thanks. And yeah, it takes a village. Yeah, yes. I um, have read recently about uh, media deserts. Right, we hear mm-hmm. about food deserts uh, and. All of the things that Chris just said are so true about the value of having this station in our area. And Chris teaches a course uh, that is part of our core curriculum because it's a designated community engagement course. That's a that's a new requirement for students is by the time they graduate, they have to take a course that's designated community engagement. And so that's an example of a course that recognizes that in order to be informed about your area, your town, your community, your neighbors, you need media. And how many students do you guys serve? Um, it, it really varies sure. because, you know, it, a lot of our classes, people who aren't majors take, and we have a number of minors. I mean, I think uh, with majors graduating each year, we're somewhere around maybe 20, mm-hmm. 15 to 20 each year. But, I mean, most all of our classes have people who maybe are minor or mm-hmm. just taking the class. I know one course I do that's sports communication, you know, I think this semester there are about 20 in there and only three of them are majors. Now, there might be a few minors in the in our sports information and media minor, I'm not sure, but lots of times it's just students who are interested. I know the interpersonal class that Trudy does is always full mm-hmm. and generally full of people who aren't our majors. They're coming in. You know, wanting to take that as uh, with you know a lot of the classes. So, um, and then we serve every uh, every student that comes through Monmouth because every student, unless they come in with uh, a credit before, take the fundamentals class. So, mm-hmm. legitimately, everybody that walks across the stage um, uh, during graduation has come through at least one of our classes and hopefully walked away with at least uh, being a little bit better at communicating or at least understanding a little bit better. I'm sure they are. You guys are doing great things. Let's uh, let's do more together, shall we? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, good job. Congratulations. Right. Thank, you. Uh, thank you. Com Utopia, com number one, right? <laughs> yeah. yes. That was the headline. <laughs> you guys have a wonderful Labor Day weekend. Thanks. You, you too. too, thank you. That is Lori Walters, Associate Professor of Communication Studies, Chris Goble, lecturer and student media at Monmouth College.